All right, welcome everyone. I, I'd be completely lying if I said that everything was going smoothly and everything's going fine, because it is absolutely not. <laughs> everything appears to be broken for me right now. Even my dashboard's not working on Twitch, but here's to hoping it everything just stays together and we last through the cast, because we've got a best of three to cover. We've got Team Archon going up against Elite Wolves. We're in the playoffs now for the Dota Radiant 2 Canada Team Cup. We already casted a series between Infamous and Not Today the other night. But now we've got Elite Wolves versus Archon. And uh, this is this looks like it's going to be a good match. Of course, Archon fresh off qualifying for the Shanghai Major. Um, but we did see them in terms of following that in the Dota 2 Canada Cup. They were in a tiebreaker for their group, and they didn't really do all too hot. They lost to Void Boys, but... Um, I guess that didn't matter because they won when it mattered against Power Friendship and just barely squeaked through in uh, second place coming out of that group to uh, to get to where they are now. And Elite Wolves, you know, they didn't have the performance that they wanted at the Shanghai Majors. They, of course, uh, made it through the open qualifiers to get into the main Ten qualifiers, but their group stage just didn't really go all too hot for them. But, um, Five seconds yeah, recently they split a series against Digital Chaos in, uh, in Dota Pit. So uh, they're, they're kind of high off that, and well, it looks like they're 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 doing a little bit of interesting stuff in the draft. Is they picked up Beastmaster and and Enchantress, both those heroes. Crystal Maiden. So we're gonna see uh, position four Enchantress Radiant moving around the map um, early on. But uh, let's get in and talk about the bands first, as we've got the Batrider and the Gyrocopter banned out by Archon, and Tusk and Undying were the bands for the Elite Wolves. Then we already mentioned those first two picks of Beastmaster and Enchantress for them. And Lone Druid and Invoker were the pickups for Archon. We saw J.O.'s Lone Druid do a lot of work in the Shanghai Major. So exciting to see what, uh, we're excited to see what Team Archon's going to be able to do with it this time around. And as for the Invoker... Five seconds remaining. If you think back or remember back to the long, super, super long game that we had... Reserve time. Which was... Was it two hours? Ten I, I forget how long remaining. it was. It was like a ridiculously long game. But um, Five we had Monkeys Forever on the Invoker, and he was not impressive at all Team on that hero. Archons and then the last fight, pick. pretty much in the game, then all of a sudden everything came together for him. But for the most part, during that game, his Invoker didn't really stand out. I know that was maybe a little bit... We're picking one game in particular, and typically his his Invoker is, is, is pretty good. But that one game just didn't seem to work for them. And I believe that was the last time they played their Invoker, so we'll look to see uh, how Archon bounces back from that. Um, as for our next set of bands, we had the Lich and the Templar Assassin band out by Archon. Abaddon and Bane were the bands remaining. for the Elite Wolves. Then they picked up the Ventral Spirit to s finish off their support core of Venture and Reserve Enchantress. Time. And then they picked up the Death Prophet, which is a great hero going up against the Invoker. Yes, and I don't know how it would fare against Lone Druid in Radiant the mid lane if Archon were to, to shift lanes around. But um, but yeah, we've seen Death Prophet dominate some lanes early and she just keeps rising and rising and rising in terms of popularity. Archon, they picked up their support duo with the Crystal Maiden and the Earthshaker. Although we don't know 100% if that Earthshaker is going to be position 4 or even position 5, depending on how Archon wants to run the five Crystal Maiden. Uh, we, there is a chance we could have the Earthshaker in the offlane, but uh, I Team think it's Archon's probably a little bit safer to, to say that um, the Earthshaker is going to be support this game. As I, I always find... I don't know, I just don't think it works really well with the Lone Druid. It's... Yeah, it's okay. Ten seconds Final bands remaining. in from Elite Wolves. It's going to be the Slaughter, so they're re removing an offlaner. Five and Archon, seconds remaining. They've, uh, their final band's going to be on a hard carry here, so we'll see which one they choose to remove. Reserve time. As there is a lot still in the pool, with the Gyrocopter being the only one banned out. See a couple friends in chat. Indie Bear with the, Ten the little Kappa remaining. wave. A Kappa wave back to you. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. And there we go. Final band's going to be in. It's going to be the Morphling band out by Team Archon. And thank God, I hate watching that hero. So <laughs> it's going to get removed from the pool. Now Elite Wolves, hmm. They want to pick something that's going to be good against the Lone Druid if they decide to go a little bit late. But they don't necessarily have to. They have strong push. 
Death Prophet, Exorcism, great at pushing Enchantress. Of course, she can yeah. grab... Um, interesting. Uh, she can grab a minion and push. Uh, Beastmaster, he's already a zookeeper when he gets his, uh, his necro books up as well, so he's great at pushing. Ventral Spirit minus armor is great at pushing. Also, Swap is great at getting a setup gank, uh, setting up a gank by swapping. Also, can use it defensively, but on this team, Ventral Spirit will probably be using the Swap a little bit more offensively, but they've also have the Primal Roar for that as well. Either way, they, the two heroes kind of complement each other Ten in terms of being remaining. able to initiate for a gank. And then if Beastmaster initiates, then Five Venge can follow up. Remaining. And vice versa. If Venge swaps, then Beastmaster can, can follow up as well with, uh, with his stun if that's needed. But I like the Weaver. The Weaver is a hero that is, once again, good at pushing. Um, can also split push quite well, creating more space for Death Prophet and some of the other heroes to prepare the lanes for a different push on the map. So I like that Weaver pick. I'm not uh, not sure exactly how well Weaver is going to work right now in the meta. I've seen it get banned out a lot by South American teams, but we really haven't seen it get played. So this is probably going to be the first game that, uh, that I remember that we're going to cast Weaver on the new patch. So that should be exciting. As for Archon, they completed their lineup with the Earth Spirit. So uh, it is going to be an offlane Earthshaker, is, is what it looks like with the support Earth Spirit. I can't remember if it was Archon or not that played, or who it was, that played the, the position remaining. 4 Earth Spirit and just completely dominated the Death Prophet mid. I don't remember what it was, Ush is Sunstrike coming in, it will not spot the TP coming out from the Venge, who will immediately TP up to the top lane, top lane, but it's a competitive game, so we gotta pause right out of the gate, so we'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait for whatever we're waiting on as it was uh, Archon that paused uh, once again guys I want to remind you that first of all I'm, I'm Niz and, and, and welcome to the channel and this cast um, but we're also casting the Dota 2 Canada Cup and we're in the playoffs this is the quarterfinals or the upper bracket quarterfinals where we've got Elite Wolves going up against Team Archon this is going to be a best of three but this is a double elim elimination tournament, so the loser is not out. They'll just drop down to the loser's bracket where they'll play best of ones. Whereas when you stay in the upper bracket, you get to play best of threes. But let's start by introducing our teams. As we've got Elite Wolves on the Radiant side. We've got Sia is going to be playing their Ventral Spirit. Smash is going to be on Beastmaster. We've got Van playing the Death Prophet. Masoku is going to be on the Enchantress. And Iwo is going to be on the Weaver. As for our dire side, that's going to be Team Archon. We got Fluff, aka Fluff and Stuff, playing the Crystal Maiden. We've got Monkeys Forever, or sorry, Whitebeard, playing the, the Ember Spirit. We've got J.O. on the Lone Druid. Monkeys Forever is going to be the one on the Invoker. And Moo is going to be playing the Earthshaker. As for our starting items, we have a smoke picked up by Masoku. That's uh, a little bit unusual in terms of seeing it picked up immediately off the start, but certainly not that unusual for an Enchantress to pick it up. Beyond that, we do have uh, sentries on fluff and stuff, but uh, nothing else too unusual. It uh, looks like Archon will be able to secure bottom rune here, and the bear was doing some, some scouting, so he knows Elite Wolves positioning the that they're begins. up securing the top and first bounty runes are going to go to both yeah, mid heroes yeah, as we got the Death Prophet and the Invoker taking them. And now everyone will start running to their lanes and we actually get to see who's laning where because looks like Elite Wolves have elected to actually keep their Beastmaster safe lane and gone for a little bit more of an aggressive lane. Is that Beastmaster is going to be going up against the Crystal Maiden and the Lone Druid. Mid lane is going to be Death Prophet going up against the Invoker, but we got to keep in mind that this Earth Spirit's probably going to be roaming around and, and staying close by as Whitebeard comes rolling on in, but he's going to miss. He's not going to be able to land on Van there. Masoku, we expect him to be kind of jungling. You see a lot of these offensive junglers take control of this camp and then go for a gank, and that's what we're seeing Masoku do, is he's going to try to go for top lane, where we're going to have the Weaver going up against the Earthshaker, but the Ventral Spirit's off in the trees as well. So this, although this would be a gank, it would still become a 2v2. This Fluff is also thinking of going on Smash in the bottom lane. 
now Whitebeard's starting to head up to the top lane, or maybe he's just gonna stack. If he's gonna stack, he's here really early. But Eo's gonna throw the bugs out, and then Sia's gonna come out of the First. come out of the trees. And oh my gosh, I just completely blanked on the fact that that eventual spirit's on the radiant side. Holy moly, that's gonna be our first blood. <laughs> Nothing's going right today, guys. Not my computer, not even Twitch, and then apparently not even my uh, my brain and what's going on up there. So a little bit of background on what happened, as I'm not going to have time for that. As Van's going to get initiated on in the mid lane, and it looks like there might even be a do uh, dive in the top lanes. They're going past the tier one tower. They're going to go for Moo. They want a second kill on this. Earthshaker, and they might find it as he's gonna lay down a fissure, eat through a tree, and thinks he's gonna get out of there, but no, Masoku's there to cut him off. So Elite Wolves will get another kill, but now Fluff and Stuff TP's up to the top lane, but he is in Viz. So they won't be able to go on him, but once again in the mid lane, Van in trouble, Sunstrike's gonna land, and Monkey's Forever with one more attack is gonna get the kill there. This game uh, starting to speed up a little bit here. As Fluff, what's the duration on his invis? He still has half of it, so he should be good. But they have cut this creep wave, so the creep wave is gonna is gonna go down here. Dyer's and Fluff top won't top have the, the safety of that. And Soku going into the jungle, where he'll run right into Whitebeard. And now with Fluff already up there, Moo rot rotating in off his respawn. It should probably be able to find a kill here on the Enchantress. No untouchable available, so it's just the, the healing spirits that are going to keep her alive, and, and they're not going to do enough. She's going to go down there. So that's uh, Archon evening the kill total at two kills apiece. Back to... Uh, oh, no. Moo, Fluff gonna be a tough kill if they try to go for the Weaver, but if they find the Ventral Spirit, that's that's doable. But they're gonna lay the Fissure down onto the Weaver, and it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to have a kill here. But uh, back to Niz story time. So before I was about to go live, our power decided to uh, to go out in the house, and it was just like a flash. It just flashed off and on, just uh, a quick little outage. So I was like, okay. Computer restarts, no big deal. Didn't lose too much work. Is Moo taking a lot of damage here? Looks like he might actually tick out to the bug there. No, they're going to get the attack in auto. Anyways, so he's going to go down. And Van once again in trouble in the mid lane. He's trying to get a kill on the monkeys forever, but not going to happen. Throws down a sun strike, forces Van to move and dodge it. And then he's actually going to get a kill on Whitebeard because the range creeps swap to him. And Van is able to stay alive long enough. Good play there by Van. Anyways, the power went out, didn't lose too much work, it was no big deal. But then I started my computer up and, and then Steam had no idea who I was. I have it automatically logged in, this, this man. Exorcism popped, not gonna do anything, he's just gonna die there. But, I had normally have Steam automatically log in, so no big deal there. And I remember my, uh, I remember my password is Monkeys Forever with a snipe there is Masoku gonna go down here as well in the bottom lane. So I remember my password, I log in, and all of a sudden, like, all my Steam settings, everything are reset. So I had to go in, and I, like, first of all, I tried closing Steam, opening back up again. No, nope. still had to re-enter everything. So I was like, okay, so much for, for the cloud save that Steam does. So then I do that, then I get into Dota, and I was like, thankfully, all my Dota settings are the same, but they... they uh, I did play a game last night, so I had to reconfigure them again as Van. One more attack. Will Whitebeard find it? He'll kick a rock at him, and he will be able to find the, the last hit there. So, thankfully, I didn't have to redo any of my Dota settings. Then I open OBS, and some things are off, but quick and easy fix, so it's no big deal there. But, like, everything just seems to be going wrong for me, and... Ugh. It's just Dyer's a rough day. It's just a rough day, guys. So we're going to see our first tower of the game go down. It's going to be taken by Dyer's the Weaver in the top, top lane. As yes, uh, we're Radiant's just about to reach the six minute mark, attack. and let's actually take a look at our lane, see who's doing what. As we got Smash sitting at 22 and 2 CS, but uh, he's getting dominated a little bit here by Jeyo, who's sitting at 33 and 7. And we, we expect the Lone Druid to win this game, win this lane 1v1, anyways. And Fluff was down here early on, so that would have helped. 
Jo get off to a good start as Smash gonna have to go below the tier one tower as they're considering diving here. The bear is dove, but no one else is gonna choose to go there as we're gonna have a TP in from Sia. But it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to get an engage on anyone as Masoku's down here as well. They do see Whitebeard, but not gonna be able to catch him. As he's actually gonna go in behind the Death Prophet in the mid lane here. TP's gonna come in for Monkeys Forever, but Van's gonna back at the appropriate time, so he'll be safe. As we uh, take a look at Van, he's sitting at 22 and 4 CS, Monkeys Forever is sitting at 26 and 4. So pretty even in terms of the mid lane, but of course we see the Invoker at 3, 0, and 2, whereas the Death Prophet's at 1, 3, and 0. So Dyer's that's that's going to be the, the difference attack. maker between the two mid laners. As for the top lane, we've got Ewo, Ewo sitting at 37 and 3, and Moo, it's been, a, it's been a hard time for the Earth Shaker in the top lane. He's sitting at 6 and 0. So you compare both hard carries. As Ewo's actually engaged up here, and he's just going to go down. That was a little bit of a risky play, and he definitely gets punished for it. But you compare the two safe laners, the Weaver and, or sorry, the two hard carries, the Weaver and the Lone Druid, then you're pretty even. 38 CS to 36 CS, a very slight advantage for the Weaver. Compare the mid laners, like I said, it was pretty even. Although uh, Van has fallen behind a little bit further, as he's now b down by 7 CS. But that's still pretty pretty even. But then you start looking at the offlaners. We've got the Beastmaster sitting at 35 CS compared to the 8 CS of the Earthshaker. So we're going to have an advantage there for the Elite Wolves. And yeah, they fall beh fell behind a little bit in terms of um, kills. Is, they're going to fall behind even further there with the Death Prophet going down the mid lane. But uh, in terms of being able to secure farm, it's it's really the difference between the bottom lane. Smash going to help Sia get a kill here with the Primal Roar. His Ewo was even coming down here as well. And now they might actually choose to uh, push the tower on this. They've already got that top tier 1 tower. So they don't really want the Weaver staying up. They're going to probably rotate him down towards the bottom lane and have him kind of stay down here. And it's kind of the moment for Beastmaster to start moving around. His Whitebeard tries to roll away but won't get far enough. And once again, that was, that was just a great play by Ebo to get in front of the Earth Spirit. And that's pretty much the only reason they got that kill. Otherwise, Whitebeard would have been safe there. And Smash pushing the bottom lane, but Monkey's going to counter by pushing the mid. So he's already got his Midas picked up, up to another 1500 gold. Van's got his face. He's a Radiant's little bit further behind right now, attack. but uh, he'll look to bounce back. Jo's got uh, both his boots. His Ewo's in trouble here. Sunstrike's gonna land, and he's dead. Even though the damage was split with the range creep, and might even even been split with one of the melee creeps, it's still enough uh, burst damage for them to kill that Weaver before he's able to to get the time lapse off. Whitebeard's got his arcanes up. Smash just finished his Necrobook. So they're uh, probably going to use that to push. See, so yeah, just your typical support items. Masoku just on brown boots, but he's at a thousand gold. I'm still probably expecting him to go Midas. And as we typically see enchantresses go that, but not all the time. You know, sometimes we'll see them actually rush a dragon lance or even drums. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see what Masoku chooses to go with this game. Gonna keep tabs on Van as he needs that uh, he needs that Yule Scepter immediately, pretty much if he wants to be able to survive a lot of these combos that are gonna be coming out, and that's gonna allow him to actually do a lot of damage in the team fights with his exorcism. His monkeys forever just picked up his blink dagger. Checking on Fluff as he's just got his tranquils. What about Moo? Up to eleven hundred, almost twelve hundred gold. So about another thousand to go before he's gonna have his blink. As Elite Wolf starting to push in the bottom lane. Set. So they'll pop the Necrobook and Whitebeard's just going to throw a rock at him. But just with the, the Earth Spirit and the CM down here, I don't think that's going to be enough to stop this push. So Archon will provide a little bit of resistance, Dyer's but in the end give up the tower. Been. As the Creep's actually getting the last hit on the tower there. There's Monkeys Forever and Jo now trying to put pressure on the mid-tier one, but with Misoku here and all those heroes free from the bottom lane, they can start rotating to defend their mid-tier one. It's getting drawn on the map by Moo right now, indicating that that's probably the play that they're going to go for. 
Radiant structure. But no, Elite Wolves are not coming back at all. Is they're actually going to get a kill in the bottom lane on the Crystal Maiden? That's fluff, and I think most of the most of the boys on Archon were thinking that that rotation was going to come, but they wait a little bit, and that's actually going to be a tower going down in favor of Archon. As Elite Wolves just respond a little bit too late, they do respond in time though to get the kill on the Lone Druid and the Invoker. So they get two kills, but they they give up their tower for free. They probably could have been able to do that a little bit earlier, still got those kills, and still got the deny on their tower. But while that was all going on, Moog continued attack. to farm the top lane up to 1800 Dyer's gold right now. The Elite Wolves continue to put, these pressure, put this pressure on these towers in the early game. And we can see just how much gold they're getting on the back of it as they have three of the top four net worths. Of course, Dyer's Monkeys Forever is leading the way fallen. right now. As he's at 6,000 net worth. Then it's Ewo at 5.1. Van is uh, still rebounding, but he's up to 5k. As he's very close to completing his Yule Scepter. Smash is then going to be the fourth one, who just finishes his, uh, his level 2 Necro Book. Also, Mu has completed that Blink Dagger. So look for him to, to use that in the next fight. Pretty early Blink Dagger timing earlier than than the average, but this is an offlane Earthshaker, even though he didn't really get much in the lane. They kind of sacrificed him in the lane. They said, you know, stay up there, try not to die. Get as much as you can. But, uh, then they gave him that space in the top lane, which I think exactly the way that they need to do it. They have to put priority on that Earthshaker getting his Blink Dagger. Because now it's going to give them a lot more potential for engaging. Also, it's going to give them a lot more strength in the team fight, and it's going to make Elite Wolves kind of sit back and think, "Wait a second, before we before we push a tower, Radiant's because you got to make sure that you're not grouped attack. up." And with the Necrobook minions, Beastmaster summons, even the Enchantress creeps as well, it's very easy to have a large number of creeps there. And Earthshaker comes jumping on in, slams the ground, and suddenly you've you've lost a bunch of heroes. We see a rotation there from Elite Wolves down towards the bottom lane, but immediately scouted out by an illusion, which they then proceed to nuke down. This is this is the value of that Weaver I was talking about in the draft, as Weaver has the potential to split push, and then it forces response from Archon, as they're going to have to start rotating some heroes up. They're just going to rotate the Lone Druid for now, but they may have to choose, uh, select, put more heroes up towards the top lane to force that Weaver back. And by doing so, it creates opportunities for the other lanes to start getting pushed out. And some more aggressive pushing from, uh, from the Elite Wolves elsewhere on the map. And that's, that's a way that you keep pushing your opponent around on the map. It allows you to be a little bit more efficient than them because they're, they're spending a lot of time moving and running around. Or even TPing to towers, wasting gold. And that's just how you just get yourself a little bit further and further ahead as the game goes on. Archon, they're going to start going for a, some more offensive style play as they're going to rotate Fluff, Moo, and uh, Wipeyard down here as he's going to place an Observer Ward to help scout out their push on this Tier 1. And it looks like Elite Wolves are somewhat preparing to defend here. They got Masoko and Sia down here. So they're going to drop a Sentry Ward, make sure that they're not getting scouted out, but they are. That Observer Ward that we just saw Wipeyard place is outside the sentry radius. The Whitebeard has gone uh, forward and he will find the kill on Masoku. I thought maybe Masoku was gonna get one more attack off there on Whitebeard, but no! Sia, or Van doesn't get it either! As Sia is gonna go down, oh my goodness. The Elite Wolves are so, so close to getting Whitebeard. They do in the end, but they lose through he three heroes in the process and now Smash comes in with the Primal Roar, but then Fluff and stuff just lets it go with that ultimate from the Crystal Maiden doing so much damage to the Beastmaster. As Elite Wolves lose four heroes, the only one they didn't lose was Ewo, who was up in the top lane, doing that split pushing, but not really getting too much headway there, I don't think, because he was up against Jo. although he did a good amount of damage to the Tier 2, but huge team fight win for Archon. And on the back of that, they're going to get a Tier 1 Radiant's tower, so even more gold goes bottom. their way. You see just a number of Observer Wards down here. We got the one from uh, Elite Wolves and then the one from Archon. And then on top of that, we've got Sentries trying to reduce that vision. Both teams acknowledging the fact that uh, having vision down here is incredibly important. 
And this sentry ward this is going to spot handy. out this observer ward. So Archon will lose the, uh, their observer ward, which did really help them push the, the bottom tier one. But uh, it's one that they'd like to keep up because they want to be able to come down into the Radiant Jungle and take control of it. Uh, Sia got that observer ward, but that gets punished for it. As Archon still not moving, they want to take control of the Radiant Jungle. And that allows them to set their, their Lone Druid up yes. in the top lane. He's in the mid lane right now, but they can leave him up there. He can be farming away. And if Elite Wolves try to split push with the Weaver, it's Lone Druid versus the Weaver. The Lone Druid can kind of hold him off for, for the time being. And if it, if it becomes kind of a stalemate, then that's going to be an advantage for Archon. They want this game to go a little bit later. They want their Lone Druid to get a little bit more CS and a little bit more gold under his belt. Because that's when uh, that hero is really going to start to shine. We're starting to see more items getting added on here. As we've got a Glimmer Cape picked up by Fluff and stuff. Moo, he's uh, completed his treads. As for Jay, he's up to 2,600 gold. He's gone for a Midas on the bear, but brown boots on both his uh, both his heroes, I guess. As Ewo and Van gonna go for a kill here, as they're gonna start draining Jo's HP, but not going to be able to to keep chasing. As Moo lays down the fissure, and that shot shuts down Van, and then Ewo goes past the tower, but he'll actually just time lapse himself back. So he doesn't really lose anything in the end. Just Fluff coming in, trying to get a freeze off, but not going to be able to find it. Vans and Viz. He's got that Yule Scepter, so... It's almost a second life on the Death Prophet. Masoku with the Hand of Midas now has picked up an Ogre Club, so this is going to be the Dragon Lance for him. Take a look at Monkey's Forever. He's completed his Aghanim Scepter, so that Midas really allowing him to keep the progression going in terms of his items. Also get uh, get some good levels under his belt as he's about to hit level 13. Whitebeard, he's got half of that Aghanim Scepter, but he's going to run right into that Yule Scepter from Van. As he's going to get silenced up, no way to roll away. As he's going to try to, right as the silence wears off, but Van manages to get the kill there. And then he's going to get another as they're going to drop Monkey's Forever. So two kills for Van on the Death Prophet as he did the a boatload of work there. Smash did a little bit in terms of axes and of course Sia did some damage as well, but... Van doing a lot of the damage and that was take a look at the the fight recap. 2300 damage of the 2500 damage was the Death Prophet. That new uh, that new buff to Death Prophet is is absolutely crazy. As well as just just how strong she was to begin with with exorcism. Didn't make note of the skill build at level 7. We're seeing uh, Different players kind of experimenting with whether you max the Carrion or Crypt Swarm at level 7 or if you max the Spirit Siphon. Seeing kind of players going either on either side of that. Jao now up to 3700. You're seeing the courier. I thought fly. Yeah, okay, there we go. It's going to fly and pick up his relic. So he's getting close to completing the Radiance. Just needs the recipe to go. And so we've got a little bit of passivity in the in the action right now so we'll take a look at our net worth and see where we stand it's just a slight lead for Archon 2500 gold for them but we see it's been kind of up and down as it's been Elite Wolves I, I don't want to say for the majority because that's about split 50 50 until about this part um, but yeah Elite Wolves kind of having control in the game they didn't get as much of a lead as we kind of expected with them getting a lot of those early towers and I guess some of that leads kind of come back to them with uh, Archon bringing down some of their, uh, the towers as well. They got the mid-tier one, then of course they got the bottom-tier one. As for the XP, it's also going to be an Archon lead. 2,500 XP in favor of them. And Elite Wolves also. They got those towers, and then that kind of allowed them to then recover in terms of uh, hero kills. As now they're, they're getting pretty close. 12 to 14. Archon still with the lead, of course, that four-man... Uh, uh, four four man uh, kill before they push the bottom tier one is definitely helping Archon keep that lead. Necrobook three on Smash, yeah, that's a sixteen hundred gold. A golden thread. Well, we've really seen Elite Wolves kind of kind of back off here and stop the push. They they definitely still have the potential Radiant's to continue pushing, and it's only going to get harder once the Lone Druid gets the relic completed or gets the Radiance completed. It's, J.O. 700 gold right now, so he's very, very close to it. But once that's up, the Spirit Barrier, Spirit Barrier can just go, cut the Creep Wave, wipe it out if you try to push. On top of that, it's really good at making sure that lanes stay pushed. Of 
course, we already know Elite Wolf's lineup is, is fantastic at, at doing some, some split pushing and keeping lanes pushed and just putting pressure on towers. So it's not going to be as easy or as controllable for J.O. As Evo has just picked up an Ogre Club. So it looks like he's going to be going for BKB as his next item. A very defensive Weaver build going Lincolns into BKB. I was thinking that we might see a, a Desolator from Evo. Not going to be the case. That would actually help quite a bit with their ability to push. It also synergizes quite well with all the physical damage that their team does, even with the, uh, Dyer's top uh, the Spirits, I believe they're called, from Exorcism. On the Death Prophet is Radiant's going to get picked up, but we're going to lose the top tier 2 tower here Dyer's as Evo is going to get the last hit there. Fallen. We've got a lot of items coming online here for Archon. We've just got the Radiant pick up. Whitebeard very, very close to finishing his Aghanims. Luff looking for a kill here. He will he will find the Ventral Spirit and almost gets the freeze off but then misses because of the fog and then he'll finally get it off as that allows his teammates to rotate on in and Evo's here as well. So we are going to see a, a bigger fight transform out of this to see it's going to go down but will Whitebeard be able to make it out now as it looks like it's just going to be a trade, a kill going either way as Monkeys Forever will run away earlier on the fight but now Fluff is trapped. As he's going to go down, so it's going to be Elite Wolves that take the slight lead there. Just uh, just two of the two supports for uh, for one side, one support for the other. Dragon Light's complete on Masoku. As now he'll start working towards the Aghanims. Smash has picked up the Blink Dagger. And we almost have a four staff completed by Moo. And there we go. Blink, Primal Roar, onto Moo. Moo will be able to... No, he won't. He doesn't have mana because he got drained by the Necrobook minion. So, a nice kill there from Smash. Because that BKB does get completed by Elo. Middle tower is under attack. And now, with the, with the pick off on the Earthshaker, they should be able to, to push here and not really worry too much. Although, the Exorcism is still on cooldown, so maybe not. They get about half, half the HP off of the tier 2 tower, so that'll butter it up for their next push. Both teams do have to be wary of potential Roche at this stage in the game. We've seen uh, Invoker Sunstrike it a few times. Obviously, Archon would love to get that because that means it's going to be very difficult for Elite Wolves to push and fight against uh, an Aegis, and Elite Wolves want it because that'll, that's going to enable them to push and be a lot stronger in the team fights. Whereas Archon, they're not going to want to push with it, they're just going to want to keep playing defensive and just keep trying to farm on the map, because they're going to go for it right now. They're going to move some heroes into the Radiant Jungle Set in to kind of distract, and they're, they're even going to find a kill on Masoki here. Whitebeard takes him forever to get that right click off because of Untouchable. They do end up getting the kill onto the onto the Enchantress, and now the Aegis is going to go onto the Lone Druid. So it uh, continues to become uh, harder and harder for Elite Wolves here. As I feel like they, we really haven't seen them group up and push. They're they're staying to this this kind of rat style split push style of play. They must they must feel comfortable going later into the game and. Weaver isn't actually too bad against the Lone Druid. Uh, he's great at destroying the bear and blowing up the bear, which is the majority of the of the damage for Archon. But then you kind of run into an issue of what do you do about the Invoker? Yeah, you can put the Necrobook minions on him and burn some of the Invoker's mana, but still, that Invoker's going to be able to control the fight so much. We see the early Aghanim's build, so he's going to be able to toss a ton of spells out. Is Elo actually not time-lapsing and just waiting there? And, uh, he'll be fine. So this game's really slowed down. As it was, it was Elite Wolves, push, 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 and then all of a sudden they stop it. Here we go, here come the Entangle procs, as Van's gonna get trapped up. Fisher's gonna come in as well, Fluff gonna get four staffed on in. But, uh, he can cast as well, that was actually the four staff from Moon. Fluff, uh, almost, I, I mean... He's not actually, he's actually going for a Yule Scepter, it looks like, Radiant's on the Crystal Maiden. Tower has fallen. 
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. The top tier one will go down, and now Elite Wolves are going to go for that mid tier two, which they built, did a lot of Radiant damage to. As Whitebeard tries to roll attack. away, but Dyer's he gets Primal Roared up. Is under attack. But, uh, there's going to be no follow up from the Elite Wolves as they're going to exit all over the place, and it looks like one of them is going to get caught, caught in it, smash. As he's been caught in a tornado, Mu going to throw the fissure down, stunning up that Beastmaster, also preventing him from running in that direction. A smash going down, and now Sia trying to run away. Will the Entangle procs be there? And I don't even think he needs them, but they're going to be there anyways because that's what happens when you select Lone Druid and Sia with the the zero range swap onto Ewo. We probably could have coordinated that a little bit better. Ewo, I don't know why he ran directly into melee range, but yes, they lose the eventual spirit anyways. Radiance Middle Tower. Now Archon looking to push this tier two. Two heroes down on the side of Elite Wolves. They should be able to. As Monkey's Forever going to blink forward and completely whiffs a tornado on Van. Van then tosses him up in the air with the Yule Scepter, but there's going to be no follow-up. As Moo now jumps in with the Epicenter. Not the Epicenter, that's Sand King. <laughs> Echo Slam as Visoku's going to get frozen up. And once again, Fluff and Stuff lets it go with the ultimate there from the Crystal Maiden. Doing a ton of damage and dropping that Enchantress. And now the Tier 2 tower will eventually go down. Radiance middle and tower now I think they're fallen. just going to keep going for the high ground because Elite Wolf still with two heroes down and this time it's two even more important heroes as it's the Death Prophet and Radiance the Enchantress. And without those two heroes it's going to be very very difficult for Elite Wolves to fight. But they're going to try anyways. They're going to throw out the stun on a Monkey's Forever who's then going to get four staff back down to the low ground as Van's going to buy back on the Death Prophet. He's going to run to the fight not actually going to TP on in. As Sia's in the middle of it and already is swapped and in a whole lot of trouble. But Eventual Spirit looked like she will be able to get away safely there. But it's Monkeys Forever, the Invoker, that goes down instead. And now Jo's in trouble. How the heck has this been a complete disaster for Archon? It was looking so good for them. But now the Lone Druid goes down and he'll respawn with the Aegis. And I don't think he's going to be able to get away. As he is surrounded by Elite Wolves and he will indeed go down. As now Archon lose three heroes. And... The opening's there for Elite Wolves to push now, and they'll go and claim that Tier 2 tower, which they already did a bunch of damage to. Because that was a huge fight for Elite Wolves. This isn't showing it, showing uh, the whole story, because of course we saw the buyback from the Death Prophet. But uh, definitely a, a nice gold swing and a, definitely a nice fight for Elite Wolves. Dyer's middle and they're going to get this Tier 2 tower attack. on the back. We'll quickly take a look at our net worth and we can see it was all Archon Dyer's and then all of a sudden this last fight which is still going to take a little bit of time to update to see uh, exactly where we stand. I still think we'll probably be um, somewhere between 5k and 7500 uh, gold in favor of Archon. XP is uh, right around the same place. But uh, they'll just get that Tier 2. Now they'll back and we're going to see the Desolator getting picked up by the Weaver as it's going to be flying in on the Courier. Beyond that, uh, I believe I saw the Octarine Core finished on Van, and yep, so that's been picked up. Smash, he's got his boots of travel up to another 1,400 gold. Got uh, Sia, who's almost got what's look like, looking like an Aether Lens that just needs the uh, Ring of Health, and that's just going to get picked up. Not picked up now, but the Courier needs to go back to get that for him. Masoku, 1,000 gold away from his uh, Blade of Alacrity, complete the Aghanim Scepter. Set. Van in a whole lot of trouble, and he's a whole lot of dead right now. As Archon find another kill, they've just been finding kills all over the map. Was, okay, so Fluff and Stuff did actually go for a 4 staff. It wasn't a Yule Scepter. I was a little bit unsure why he'd be going for a Yule Scepter. He had that Sage's Mask, which he picked up very, very early in the game. But, uh, yeah, he's... Well, he obviously sold it. And has gone for the four staff instead. Is under attack. So Whitebeard gonna roll on, and he's gonna find the Vengeful Spirit. Take a look at Jo's item. He's got the the Vlad's, and he's also added on a plate mail. Can't click on his bear. I'm trying. There we go. Is, uh, the bear is Radiant's holding onto the Hyperstone. So an AC ball. almost completed there, as we saw a little bit of split pushing there coming up from Elite Wolves, but. Looks like they've backed away as they don't want to push up against the Invoker. But Archon, they're not done pushing the bottom lane. They're still going. And this Tier 3 tower is taking a lot of damage. The Demolish Radiant's ability of the Spirit Bear does a lot of extra damage to towers. 40% extra damage to structures. 
Really just completely mow through that tier 3 tower. And now with the respawns coming up, they're going to back away. We'll be able to get some farm in the top lane and prepare for Roche's respawn. Which we don't know exactly how long before he's going to be up, but we'll find out in just over a minute's time from now. Moose got a Shadow Blade completed. So he'll have that in the next fight. All, all of Moose items are mobility items. So he's got the ability to force staff and then blink. So it's very hard to zone him out so that he doesn't get a good Echo Slam. Um, on top of that, he can even Shadow Blade and then blink. Or he can do that previous combo and then Shadow Blade out. He can Shadow Blade in and attack you for a lot of damage. There's a lot that he can do with this core uh, set of items. And that just makes him this threat from pretty much anywhere on the map. Unless you see him and can actually see him across the map, um, then there's there's pretty much no way for him to get to you immediately. But uh, if he's missing, you, you can expect he's he's only a screen or two away and he can he can definitely cover that with the abilities that he has picked up uh, through those items. Ogre, Club, Ogre Club's been picked up by Smash. Let's see has completed that Aether Lens and they're going to look for an opening here but not going to find it. Fluff, Force Staff, and Glimmer Cape. Evo continuing to do the split pushing in the top lane. Once again, they're going to send the bear up here to uh, to bring down the creep wave, but Evo's going to start doing a lot of damage to the bear, and they're not going to be able to do this going forward. As Evo continues to to add on some damage items, as we've We've seen him go for a very defensive opening with the Lincolns and the BKB, but now he's added on the Desolator and his next item, which not sure what it's going to be. It might be an MKB, as uh, that'll just further help him do a lot of damage to uh, to not just the bear, but these uh, enemy heroes of Archon. But uh, that AC, which is getting close to completion, I imagine. Oh, it actually is complete, excuse me, on Jo. So that'll definitely help tank the bear up. Brings it up to 23 armor, but the Desolator is going to reduce that by 7. And of course, we've got the Swarm, which uh, reduces it by 1. So, pretty much almost removing the benefits that you're getting from that AC. We're going to have a little bit of a passive moment here in the game as both teams are are you going to be kind of controlling the mid and the bottom lanes? We see just Elite Wolves in the bottom right now, pushing it back out, and now Archon's sending the bear there to start pushing mid. And the reason for that is they're just preparing for Roche. And they want to make sure that both the mid and the bottom lanes are, are pushed in their favor, because that helps keep control of that bottom area of the map. And now Archon, recognizing the fact that uh, Roche is going to be up, or could even potentially be up, they're going to go for a smoke ink here, and they're unfortunately not going to find anyone, or or maybe they will. See us here as well. As well they're going to go for the bear. They're going to stun it up, and this is going to give them the great opening that they need. Is There we go. Moo comes blinking on in, and there goes the Weaver. There goes the Vengeful Spirit. As that is two great pickoffs for Archon, and with the kill on the Weaver, they might even just try to push high ground here, get the set of racks before they back away. I imagine they're, they're probably going to go for this and expect maybe a buyback, but it's not going to happen. We have no buyback available on either of these heroes. So that Weaver is down for another 50 seconds. And those racks are going to be down for the rest of the game. No respawning here. And now they're going to get another set as the bottom racks are going to go down. 40 seconds before Weaver still, they can even stick around. They can bring down these tier 4s because the E-Wolves are not going to be able to defend here. But Archon will play it safer. They're going to go for Roche. As the ping has come out, the fact that he's not there, they just sunstriked it. Sunstriked it, but... They'll start heading back towards Roche Pit as Fluff's going to walk in and check it once again. Now they'll probably just... Uh, oh, might, he might ward or They'll probably just leave Fluff in there and then immediately Roche is going to respawn. And they go for it. And this is going to be an Aegis for Archon, and this is probably going to secure them, secure them the game, unless, unless something completely disastrous happens for Archon. They pretty much got this one in the bag, and Aegis is just going to help uh, secure that for them. But Elite Wolves, they're going to come and try to contest here, but Roche is already going to go down, so they will have the Aegis. The question is, will he be able to get out of the pit? And it looks like Elite Wolves having second thoughts. 
Because they're going to try to go on them here. And they're committed to the fight now. EMP is going to hit a lot of heroes, but most of them are BKB'd up, so they're not getting their mana drained. Sia will go down. Did get a, a sentry ward down, helping them have vision, but EO is going to go down there on the Weaver. Monkey's Forever getting right clicked by Masoku from the high ground. He'll get the kill there. But immediately, Monkey's Forever going to buy back in the game, and this looks like it's the end of it for Elite Wolves. They're going to tap out here, I imagine. But, uh, they haven't typed it yet, as they do still have Smash alive, and there we go. Right as he goes down, he types the GG. So Elite Wolves will tap out of this one, as Archon takes Game 1 in the series. Best of three. Which, uh, we'll have Game 2 coming up very shortly. But, uh, pretty damn good uh, performance from both teams, actually. I thought Elite Wolves did... Uh, pretty good in the early game and on their early to mid game transition they were able to go and take a lot of those towers and get an advantage through that um, of course they were able to keep even in most of the lanes and of course winning out on their off laners but beyond that they they kind of just hit a rough part where all of a sudden they got the tier ones they were starting to knock on the tier twos and then they just kind of stopped and they weren't able to, to keep going and keep the momentum going in their favor which allowed J.O. to get that farm going on the Lone Druid. Once he got the Radiance up, it just became harder. And then the other items started to come up. You got the Blink Dagger on the Earth Shaker, which happened before the Radiance, but um, the Invoker started getting gigantic. Even even the two supports, Whitebeard and Fluff, were, were, were pumping out items as well. And their, their GPMs, 338 and 388, aren't the highest. But, I mean, they had the, mo they had the items when it mattered. We had... The Earth Spirit getting a very, very early Aghanim Scepter. And then on top of that, we had an early Glimmer Cape from Fluff and stuff. And that allowed both of them to be very effective in the fights. And we can see the participation right now. 5, 2, and 13 for Fluff. So 18 participation there. And Whitebeard even better. 4, 5, and 19. That's 23 participation. The highest on their teams. Uh, so that's what you expect from the support players. But in the end, just great play from uh, from pretty much everyone on the side of Archon. They're going to look to keep that going into Game 2, which will be in be up in just a few minutes as uh, we're going to throw it to a quick break once again guys thanks for watching i was niz and hopefully going to stick around for game two and in the remainder of this series as uh, it's going to be the only series we have for tonight but we are going to have uh, some more dota 2 canada cup coming up in the future as we're going to have another day off and then we're going to have uh, on the 17th shazam versus leviathan and then we have to wait a little bit longer until the 20th where we're going to have a huge one. Complexity versus Digital Chaos. That one's going to be very exciting. But we do have to finish this series first. So I'm going to throw it to a break and we'll be back with Game 2 in just a minute.